Hello there. Today on the Escape the Shed, I'm on the track bed of part of the old Great Central Railway at Staveley near Chesterfield. And I'm going to be walking to Renishaw. So let's get started. I'm currently on the track bed of the old Great Central Railway, just north of their old Staveley Town Station, which later became known as Staveley Central. It opened in uh, 1892, I believe it was, um, and closed in 1965, having closed to passengers in 1963. Now, over that way, looking south towards Staveley uh, Town Station, or Staveley Central, as I think we'll call it from now on, um, there's not much of the track bed left. But, looking this way, you go across an original bridge, heading towards, um, eventually towards Killermarsh, but the next station along the track is Renishaw, then Killermarsh, um, and it's now part of one of these multi-user tracks for cyclists and horse riders and that, so we're going to be walking along there next. Now, the bridge here actually goes over the track bed of what used to be another railway line. That down there was a Midland track bed. And although they kind of meet here at more or less right angles, because there were so many tracks in this area, it wasn't just a, a double track line going one way and double track line going the other way. Because there were so many sidings and loops and curves and things, um, these two railways did actually join up in quite a lot of places. But originally, they were rivals. The Great Central and the Midland were rivals and both wanted to get to where I'm going next on uh, on this walk so between here and Renishaw although they took slightly different routes the two railways kind of crisscrossed each other and we'll be seeing more about the Midland later by the way, this track bed down here is what they're hoping to reinstate um, for part of HS2. Whether they'll actually do it or not is anybody's guess. Coming off the bridge, we now go down a set of steps, but obviously there used to be another bridge over here. And at the bottom of these steps, not only is where the Chesterfield Canal went under the Great Central Line, but I believe there was another Midland track as well. There were a heck of a lot of railway tracks in this area. There's absolutely nothing in Staveley now, but this is a good point to explain why the station for the Great Central here was firstly called Staveley Town and then was called Staveley Central. It's really quite simple. It's because on both railway companies lines the station at, Tave, at Staveley was called Staveley Town. By 1950 when both were well under um, British Rail ownership British Rail saw sense and thought we'd better change the name of one of these. They were both still open at the time and so the great central stations, where they were called town, became central. So Staveley Town on the great central line became Staveley Central. Got it? It's as clear as mud isn't it? So having just come down those steps I've now stood where I would have been directly under the Great Central Line. 
this path in front of me, I believe at one point had another rail line on it, um, but also alongside this path, and now filled in, is part of the Chesterfield Canal that they've not reinstated yet. And if we go around 180 degrees, the old canal is to the left of that track there, and just over the brow of the hill, just down there, they had an excavation a few years back and uh, excavated the remains of a couple of old narrowboats. Right, I'm climbing up the other side now and you can clearly see behind me how there used to be a bridge there. And as we continue climbing we're now back on level, back on the old track bed level. There's a modern cycle path going that way, but we want to go on the old track bed this way, towards Renishaw and then on to Killamarsh. So we're now quite high up and to the left here, behind all these trees, there's some houses, but there's actually quite a thick area of trees there. If I just go in here you'll, you'll see there's quite a lot of trees and quite a lot of overgrowth. And that's because somewhere here, coming in from the um, left hand side as you're looking now, coming in this kind of a way, was another sort of head shunt, if you like, of the um, Midland Railway that came in round a curve and then ran parallel to this track for a while and then just stopped dead and there was a crossover onto this old Great Central line um, and I'm guessing it's so they could reverse a train off of one line and onto the other because remember these two lines actually kind of met at right angles so the curve that this came in on kind of set the train going through 90 degrees. I'm guessing it was probably used mainly for mineral traffic. This was a big area for coal mines and things like that. So the station at Staveley opened in the 1890s um, and it closed as Staveley Central um, first to passengers in 1963 although it did continue until the end of the 1964 season for excursion trains as many of these closed stations did they just carried on a little bit longer to serve some excursion traffic but of course it was around about the time of Dr Beechin and his famous Ikes and so a lot of railways um, were being closed down at that time. The Great Central was one of them and this being a Great Central track is one that got the chop. It's a bit of a shame really um, because now with all this talk about high speed 2 and all these billions and billions of pounds it's going to cost if they just kept the Great Central Railway in its entirety it would have pretty much done the job that High Speed 2 is going to do and the main line of the Great Central was a very straight and um, very fast railway way ahead of its time you could say it was a High Speed 2 of the 19th and 20th centuries if only they'd known then what they know now. It's a bit debatable here which track bed now are actually on because there's a bit of a space in the trees here. There's a little drop down and a space in the trees here. Um, 
So I'm thinking here we might actually now be on the Midland track bed of that head shunt um, with the great central lines off to the right because as you go up here just around the corner ahead of us there it will suddenly get um, narrower and we'll actually end up on quite a substantial embankment but just for now there's space in the trees down here for some tracks so this kind of area would have had at least a couple of railway tracks on it as always the problem with these lost railway walks is you tend to do them in the summer when the weather's nice but the other thing about the summer of course is there's lots of leaves on the trees and lots of ground cover so it's very hard to spot anything of historic interest but I've walked down here a lot at all times of the year and I've never really spotted much of anything so I think it's all gone but I do have a feeling walking on this that the surface I'm walking on has been raised up quite a lot because there's no ballast or anything in it there's nothing that looks like it's an old railway track bed actually in the surface you know it's all much finer chippings than ballast would be you can see now that we're on a dead straight section of the line and they put various seats along here that you can stop and take a break and admire the view. The place over in the distance there with the houses is Mastin Moor. And somewhere in the bottom there in the fields is where the route of the Chesterfield Canal runs. That's a section of it that is hopefully to be reinstated sometime in the next few years. But I have done videos already on the Chesterfield Canal, so check back on the channel if you want to know more about that. And just past that seat, we come to our first little tunnel if you like, a cut and cover tunnel through the embankment that we're now on because it's now quite a considerable embankment although the line is pretty much level the ground has fallen away quite steeply and you can see down there the old blue engineering bricks that we use for this farm access so they could get out into this field which is actually a floodplain this field it floods quite a lot in winter so Masden Moor is in front of us there just slightly to the right of the of the picture where you can see those white houses um, and if we come around here basically it's pretty much a straight line um, all the way to Renishaw which is our next station stop. The lady that I know who uh, lives in those houses back there that backed on to the uh, line here has lived here all her life and she remembers this being a railway and she said to me once when I asked her about it I said can you remember the train she says oh yeah certainly I can she says when I was a kid, we used to come down to the bottom of the garden and wave to the Master Cutler as it went past. So the Master Cutler, one of Britain's more famous trains, used to go this way apparently. There's not much in the way of railway infrastructure left here, but as the ground rises up again to meet us, so we're not on quite such a high embankment, I'm looking down in the trees here, 
and there's a bit of very typical old railway fencing. Can you see it? Now can you see it? These old concrete fence posts that had wire strung between them are a typical sign that you're on an old railway track bed. Never far away from us are other railway lines. That line there I believe is again part of the Midland. The road that you see going under that bridge there, under the metal bit of that bridge, um, will be the road that goes from Staveley to Eckington. So, as you can see, although the two railways were kind of separate, they both got between the two places in their own way. In fact, that bit of the railway line that I just showed you over there, on that big stone and metal bridge, I believe that bit is still in use. One of the few tracks in this area that is. But we're getting closer and closer to Renishaw now and we'll be finishing today at the site of Renishaw Central Station. Originally um, either Renishaw and Eckington or Eckington and Renishaw, I can't remember which way around it was. Eckington is a place next door to Renishaw um, but they changed the name of the station again to Renishaw Central because again BR in 1950 found they'd got two stations in the area with the same name and so the abandoned one that we're coming up to was renamed Renishaw Central but just before we get there we go over what is a fairly substantial bridge here looks quite modern that bridge but I guess it can't be because uh, this line's not been used for a good many years I don't know when it actually closed when the line closed to freight it might not be that long ago because there were a lot of pits and things in the area so although the stations closed in the 60s this line could have remained open for quite a lot longer than that for coal traffic let me know in the comments if you happen to know the details. As we've come along, we've now got a bit of modern fencing keeping us on the top of the embankment. But just behind it, another one of those original old concrete railway fence posts. We're almost at Renishaw now so this is probably a good time for me to uh, ask you if you're subscribed or not to the channel. If you like what we do here then get subscribed and hit the notification little bell thing so you'll get notified whenever we put up more videos some of which will be pretty similar to this one. And also, if you really like what we do, why not consider supporting the channel on Patreon? It's at patreon.com 
forward slash and this shed. That's patreon.com forward slash and this shed. The sun has really come out now and I can't help but wonder to myself what is in this mass of undergrowth. The plant life is certainly quite interesting around here. This one is called Golden Rod. I happen to know that because I've got some growing in the garden at home. Just on my left as I'm walking along here, um, I'm back on the level with the ground around us now and you can see there's massive earthworks going on and this is typical of the sort of thing that happened around here when all the pits closed in the 1990s you know they got a lot of earth moving equipment and that and they made a lot of the old coal board land into nature reserves and things like that but they really did shift many many thousands maybe even millions of tons of earth and that's why now there's often not a massive amount of history surviving because so much of the ground level has changed. We're now fairly close to um, the station and I believe this kind of area here, this big flat expanse that they've done all these earthworks on, I believe there may have been some tracks on there, a bit of a a good yard perhaps, that sort of thing. But I'm not sure exactly what it was there. I know in this area there was a ironworks as well. But in fact that closed very recently but I don't know the area well enough to know where it was. So I wonder if that was somewhere near here. And I just heard a train in the background. That must be on that line that I showed you um, a while ago. So it's good to know there's at least one bit of railway in the area that's still working. In fact, as I've just recorded that last bit, the train has just passed me in the trees somewhere over there because that line which again is part of the Midland runs kind of parallel to this one at this point and it's still used for at least freight and I believe passengers as well but I'm not sure about that but I have seen freight trains on there but as you can see here they're doing all kinds of earthworks I just hope they're not going to build millions of houses on it like they seem to be doing in so many places these days. That plant that I saw back there and thought was some sort of orchid, I don't think it is because there's loads of it here and it's actually quite big. And just behind all this greenery where the doing all that moving of the earth there's a bulldozer just started up but not to worry because you'll see in front of us a bridge and that bridge means we are pretty much at Venishore Station sorry Venishore Central Station the station itself was just on the other side of this bridge pretty much where the little car park is that you can now park up in if you want to have a walk or a cycle up and down this trail it's quite nice there are a lot of cyclists use it though particularly in summer so if you're walking it sometimes feels a bit like you're walking down the middle of the M1 motorway with all the cyclists zooming past you 
It's a busy track. Probably has more people per hour on it now than it did when it was a railway. Anyway, I'm coming up to the bridge here and there is a plaque on it on both sides of this bridge um, to commemorate the fact there was once a railway station here. The road on top of the bridge there is the road that eventually goes to Sheffield. Sheffield is in that direction, over there. And this looks like a fairly new bridge. I don't remember when this got put in, but there must have always been a bridge here. So whether this is a totally new bridge or whether it's just a concrete casing around the old bridge, I'm not entirely sure. But if we go for a look over here before we get to the bridge, there's another bridge. And one little cut off section of the Chesterfield Canal. As you can see, doesn't go much further than the bridge there with water in it and I think they probably did this when they put the bridges in. This is bridge number 18 on the canal apparently according to the little plaque on it. But this bit of canal will not take much reinstating. And here it is looking the other way. You can see there's a track down the side of it. Perhaps we'll have a walk down there in another video. But there's not much water in this bit of the canal and I think it's because it's a very much a, a little cut off bit on its own here at Renishaw that I think was done when they did some housing development nearby. But if we go and have a little look at the at the bridge you'll see it's bridge number 18, Balbra Road Bridge. But we're not doing the Chesterfield Canal today, we're doing the Great Central Railway. So I will come back onto the uh, old track bed, which is literally a dozen steps away from the canal here, as you can see. That's where we've come from and we'll go under the bridge to see where we're going. And this bridge has also got a plaque on it. Site of the former Renishaw Central Station, Great Central Railway and LNER. And that's about it. There is nothing left here of the station and if after going under the bridge we come up and have a look at this side of the canal although there's a pathway you can see there's not much of the canal there either so let's hope the uh, Chesterfield Canal Trust eventually get this reinstated when they get it joined back up to the canal network, I'd quite like to have a narrowboat on it.